in this uh, session we'll be looking at uh, the measures of location for a particular set of data see generally i am more interested in estimating the central point of any sample of data what is the central value what is the middle value associated with a set of data so there are different kinds of measures that are associated for computing my central point and that is what we call as the measures of location or measures of central tendency in short so i am trying to identify one single number which is a representative of the center of the data and that is where the more common kind of uh, measures that we always come across one being the mean then we have the median and the third goes as the mode out of this the mode is not that popular and the usage wise also very few users associated whereas the mean and the median have different kinds of uses so the more and more common measure for the location or central tendency is the mean so if i have different kinds of observations let's say x1 x2 x3 so on xn if i have so many uh, observations then so like this we have n observations then i am simply uh, talking about uh, the mean of this particular sample which i represented as x bar i will add up all these x's so i'll sum up all these x's from 1 to n and i divide this number by n so it's basically the sum of quantities divided by the number of quantities that is what we typically call as the average as well so if i have a simple data set the way i am computing the mean is add up all the numbers and divide them by n but what if i am given a frequency distribution right what if i want to find out the mean of the frequency distribution especially discrete like okay i am talking about the scores 5 6 7 8 and uh, so these are the scores and these are the frequencies let's say the frequency is 4 3 2 1 so four people got 5 three people got 6 two people got 7 and one person got 8 now if i want to find out the mean of such a kind of a frequency or distribution all i am doing is do a multiplication of the scores so if i am saying scores are x1 x2 x3 x4 corresponding frequencies are f1 f2 f3 f4 then what we are saying is multiply the frequency with the corresponding score add all of them and divide it by the total frequency which is the total frequency coming up to n so basically so here i am adding up to k because i may have only k groups so all the summation of all the k is what will be my n so in this case it is like 5 into 4 plus 6 into 3 plus 7 into 2 plus 8 into 1 divided by the total frequency the total frequency is 10 so 20 plus 18 38 plus 14 52 8 60 8, divided by 10 coming out to 6 so the frequency for this particular group is 6 so if there is a frequency distribution given and i am supposed to find out the mean of this particular frequency distribution that is the way i compute the mean but what if i have a grouped data grouped frequency distribution 
Okay, now let me talk about scores. Okay, 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, and 15 to 19. Let's say these are the four groups. I have four people getting in this range, three people getting in this range, two people getting in this range, one person getting in this range. So this is my interval and these are the frequencies. Now how do I compute, how do I compute the mean of this kind of a group? In that case, what we typically talk about is I find the midpoint of each of the intervals. So what is the midpoint 0 to 4? Uh, it's nothing but the average of the minimum and the maximum value 0 plus 4 by 2 which is 2. Here it comes out to be 7. This is 12 and this is 17. Then so take this as your excise. Take these as your FIs and then go ahead with your mean computation which is nothing but sigma FI XI across all of them divided by the total frequency. Total frequency is 10. So what is that I can do? I can do 2 multiplied by 4, which is 8. Four, 3 multiplied by 7 is 21. 2 multiplied by 2 gives me 24. And 1 multiplied by 17 gives me 17. This divided by 10. 29 plus 24. 53 plus 17 gives me 70 divided by 10, which gives me 7 as the, uh, for this particular group, I can say 7 is the mean. So we have looked at the computation of the mean. One, a raw data is given. One, a discrete frequency or distribution is given. And one, a grouped frequency distribution, which is generally applicable for continuous data, right? And this is very commonly used uh, kind of mechanism, the mean. But one thing we have to understand as a big drawback with the mean is, it is very much affected by the outliers. Very extreme, extremely high or extremely low value present in the data will impact my mean tremendously because it would be added, it will uh, increase the sum or decrease the sum drastically, and uh, that's where the uh, that's where the average or the mean value is going to either increase or decrease drastically. That's the reason we say mean is more and more susceptible to outliers. Now this is where we are looking at an alternative measure for central tendency or the location, which is what we are calling as the median. So median is nothing but it's a middle value. I arrange the data in the order of magnitude either in the ascending order preferably i arrange the data in the ascending order and so once i have arranged the data in the ascending order the median is that particular value which will split the data into two halves so which means half of the value should be lesser than the median and the remaining half of the value should be greater than the median. That is what is the role that is played by the median. You arrange the data in the ascending order and you pick up the value in such a way that half of the value should be lesser than the median value and half of the value should be greater than the median values. So that's the reason, okay, if my total data is n observation, and let's say n is odd, right? So probably I have one, two, three, four, five as my data. So odd number of observations. And they are in the ascending order. My median is always the middle element, which is nothing but n plus one by tooth observation. So here there are five values, five plus one by tooth observation, which is the third observation. 
So after arrangement, third observation will become my medium. Whereas if there are even number of elements, now there is no one single middle value. Probably these two are middle values. So that's the reason the median will be the, the mean of the two middle values. So 3 plus 4 by 2 making it 3.5. So the, if, if the data is uh, if the data is even, we are again using n plus 1 by 2 element itself, but this time it becomes 6 plus 1 by 2, which is the 3.5th element. So 3.5th element is nothing but the element that is in between the third and the fourth. So the third element is 3, fourth element is 4. So the 3.5th element is somewhere in between 3 and 4. And it's the average of 3 and 4, which we are making it as 3.5. So the general way of remembering the median is go with the n plus 1 by 2 element. And what we see is at least for some kind of data sets, the median is more and more robust or resistant to outliers. In some cases, you can't still help. But at least in some cases, we can have a very good hold in terms of median not getting that badly affected because of the presence of outliers compared to that of the mean. That's one of the prime reasons, especially uh, where there are heavy number of outliers, median comes out to be a better measure of the centeredness of the data compared to that of the mean. And the other way of looking at the median is nothing but if I have a cumulative frequency table, right, cumulative frequency table, I look at where is the 50% of the observation coming up. And that particular plot, from that particular plot, let me uh, take up uh, the example which we have used uh, earlier, or probably let me come out with uh, a cumulative frequency table, based on that we'll see what is the value of the median. Okay, let's look at this uh, particular data, right? We have different observations, 8, 9, 10, 11 kind of stuff. So we'll try to find out the frequency distribution associated with each one of them, right? So let me uh, try to find what is the minimum value so that we'll uh, create a frequency distribution. So the minimum value in this data is around 5 and the maximum value in this case is around 14. Okay, so the minimum is 5, maximum is 14 out of these 50 elements. Now I am more interested in finding out how many are there in each of the groups. Right, so that uh, I can very well uh, do a frequency distribution and a cumulative frequency distribution. So we'll plot a frequency distribution to start with by taking, uh, let's say, two at a time. So let me uh, take a simple, uh, the size I'll take it very, uh, like two elements only. We'll create a pivot table here where I'm selecting Right, so these are the different uh, values that I'm looking at. So this is the, instead of summation, I'm going with the counting. So I'm getting different kinds, okay, 49, because the first one is a header in my case. Okay, so this is how the different values are coming up. Right, now I can very well go for a grouping as well, so that I group it with uh, a group uh, interval of two. So 5 to 6, I get 3, 7 to 8, I get 8, 9 to 10, I get 21, something like this. Now I copy this and create a cumulative frequency distribution. So I am creating a cumulative frequency distribution like this. And I am doing the plotting of this cumulative frequency distribution. If possible, let me uh, create a relative frequency or uh, relative cumulative frequency distribution where I divide each value by the maximum value. 
So this is around 6%, something like this. Now for this relative cumulative, I'm doing a kind of a line plot. Okay, this is the kind of a cumulative frequency distribution that I'm getting. Now this is where if I, this is the cumulative frequency distribution. So if I'm interested in finding out what is the median, I look at the 50% of the area. So 50% of the area, I map it to the curve here. This is the 50%. I map it to the curve here. And from this point, I drop it down. Yes, somewhere around 2.5 or the second two and a half the group, right? Uh, somewhere around the group uh, two and a half is what is associated with my median. So you could see here, this group is containing right from 22% to 65%. So somewhere this group is going to become my median group as such. So that's the way a cumulative frequency table can really help me in terms of identifying my median quite comfortably in the data. And then the other measure of central tendency, which is the mode, which is primarily that particular observation that is coming with highest frequency. That particular observation which is appearing with highest frequency is called as a mode. Right, probably in this case, if I don't go with uh, two at a time, if I simply uh, go with only uh, one at a time instead of doing the grouping, Right, for that particular pivot table, I ungroup. So I'm getting different values. Now what I could simply see is this is the group that is having the maximum value. So I'll say the mode of this particular data is 12, 10. Because that is the particular observation that is coming with uh, the highest frequency. And that is what we call as a mode. And otherwise, we also call it as the most typical value, most general value that we are getting is the mode. Practically, there are very few applications of this particular, but we some, we some at some places, we still see some basic application. But in general, mean and median are the two important measures of central tendency that we observe in the data. All right. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.